Sandrickson's performance as the hitman. So, that's Hit List. I'm going to put that on my list sometime and watch it. Next is a film called uh, Rainbow Drive, starring Peter Weller. And, uh, you know, he's the right cop on the wrong road. Peter Weller, Rainbow Drive. It's a dead end. Robocop's Peter Weller gives a gritty performance as a much more human policeman in Rainbow Drive, a tense crime thriller set in the dark underside of contemporary Los Angeles. Weller plays Mike Gallagher, the acting head of the of a Hollywood's homicide division, whose affair with a married woman leads him to stumble on the scene of a multiple murder. He becomes the only man who can stop a cover-up that reaches the lowest depths to the highest level of the city. Beautiful Stella Ward, who stars in this slick action thriller adapted from Roderick Thorpe Die Hard novel, Die Hard's novel, as, a Gal- as Gallagher's mysterious ally and shadow as it descends into a nightmare of lies and corruption. As he closes in on the truth, the agent moves us closer to his partner, to a partner and mistress, until Gallagher becomes the final target and soon on the most treacherous road in L.A., Rainbow Drive. And it also features a score by Tangerine Drain. So, I mean, I like Peter Weller, so I'm a big Peter Weller fan, so this looks like it could potentially be better than Sunset Heat, at least, or uh, his dumb romantic comedy than something in Paris. Next one is a movie that, yes, this is this tape is not in great shape. This box isn't in great shape. But you have no idea how hard this film was to find. So what I'm talking about is a film called Rat Boy. Yeah, Rat Boy. Yeah, you heard it right, Rat Boy. Directed by Sandra Locke. And uh, it's so hard to be different. Window Dresser. Nikki Morrison, Sandra Locke has always dreamed long, dreamed big, and failed. Now at last, it looks like one of those big dreams that can come true. And a small form of a rat lookalike fellow in it called Rat Boy. But when Nikki thrusts her discovery into a dynamic round of hype and exploitation, her grand always seems backfire into a crazy and unpredictable sequence of misadventures. Part fable and part morality play, Rat Boy is a funny, whimsical, clear-eyed look at the human failings and feelings. With this film, Locke, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, Willard, and six clingy sort of adventures, including the gauntlet and sudden impact, adds another strong portrayal to her acting career and makes an impressive directorial debut. Rat Boy is a fairy tale with a cutting edge. Michael Wilmington of the Los Angeles Times wrote, Locke tells a charming story swiftly, with a delicate, breezy touch. Robert Townsend, Hollywood Shuffle, and Christopher Haywood, TV's Mr. Be- Belvedere, add to the fun with the memorable comic performances of respectively Street Lights Hustler and the heavy-handed action coach. An Academy Award winner, Rick Baker, an American world from London, Star Wars, is the one makeup wizard responsible for the amazing physical believability of Rat Boy, movingly portrayed played by Sharon Barrett. Sometimes the biggest, most charming adventures come in small packages. One of them is Rat Boy, a tall tale that, not just, that is not, not just about being different. It's also humorous and insightly different in itself. So basically, this film, folks, Rat Boy, only on VHS. It is not on DVD. It's hella hard to find. The last time I even saw this movie, remotely even close to, you know, being... I got this on a hell of a deal. I bought this for a dollar in Nebraska when I was visiting my, my friend, mom's friend's relatives. A dollar. You know how much money this movie is worth? I went to Goodwill in downtown in Oregon, you know, before I went I moved to OKC. And... It was in a glass case. It was like seventy dollars. This is a hard, hella hard to find film, and then get it for a dollar is a hell of a deal. Now I don't know if it's, you know, really that great, but I, I I've always been curious about it because I was I've read articles about it in my some of the Starlight magazines that I have. So I was like, hmm, that boy, right, ba- Rick Baker, and, eh, all right. But it's incredibly hard to find, so I'm glad I was able to at least pick up a copy. So that's Rat Boy. The next one is a film that I just laughed my ass off when I found out that Christian Bale was in this. It's a film called The Land of Far Away. I always want to like meet Christian Bale on the street and be like, Hey, you're the, guy, you're the kid for The Land of Far Away. So in Timothy Buttons, Suzanne New York, Christopher Lee, Christian Bale. Merrimax Films. They're two best friends. 
a million miles from home, an incredible adventure, beyond the boundaries of space and time, a place called the land of far away. It looks like, you know, look at that, look, British mm. Bale riding a unicorn, <laughs> badass my ass. The king wants to meet him, an evil knight wants to destroy him. Seven year, eleven year old Basi Olsen. What kind of name is that? Who lives in Stockholm? Oh, that's what. With his overbearing aunt Edna, dreams of finding <laughs> of finding the father he's never known. One night, Bossy. <laughs> I can't get over that name, Bossy. Bossy, come here, Bossy. <laughs> Bossy rescues a spirit trapped in an empty bottle. Recognizing Bossy, the spirit flies into the beautiful land of far away. Well, Bossy is united with his father, the king of the land of far away. Bossy learns that his real name is Mio, <laughs> and that he's the king's long last son. The father and son's joy is short lived, however, as Keiko, an evil knight from the neighboring land outside, is kidnapped and placed terrible spells on most of the kingdom's children. According to an ancient legend, only a male child of royal blood can destroy Keiko and deliver the children. So, on a white horse named Miramis, is that, is that, you know, Miramax is releasing this, release this film, is it like, we'll call it Miramis, because we want to get your support, Miramax. <laughs> Mio and his friend, Jum Jum, set over to Kato's kiss. <laughs> Jum Jum? Sick cat. This journey is a perilous, though, as Kato spies. Is this the same Kato as Bruce Lee? It was Bruce Lee's ghost. <laughs> the fucking Green Hornet's partner. Ruling with an iron fist over in the land of far away. Spy is captured first Miramis, and then after a chase through the dead forest, Mio and Jum Jum. But thanks to an irresistible co thanks to an invisible cloak, Mio is able to escape. Armed with his magic sword, Mio engaged the crafty Kato in a sword fight. The fate of the captured children and the future of the land of far away hang in the balance as good out as evil. <laughs> Prison entertainment, folks. And I've said was cheap and I'm like Kristen Bale ah this is gonna be fun yeah I'm sorry I just have this dislike for Kristen Bale I mean I like him in films such as American Psycho but his Batman's overrated and everything else he's done is overrated in my opinion Equilibrium was good Machine is boring sorry some guy starving himself to death is, and I don't really care but Land of Far Away looks like it'll be fun with Jum Jum and Neo and Keto and Freaking Miramar, Miramar, Miramis. <laughs> Land of far away. Next is a film that, well, it's an Apex Entertainment film, but Corey Feldman's in it, and I was like, eh, whatever, it's 50 cents. Film called Voodoo. Voodoo with Corey Feldman. Yeah, Corey Feldman and Voodoo. Deep in the heart of Los Angeles, there's a secret. To sin is so sinister and so evil that those who are w who witness it, who, who those who are witness <laughs> that those who are witnesses to it will either lose themselves in its dark grasp or lose their lives fleeing from it. Andy Chadwick, Corey Feldman, tries to pursue the Wells College only to find himself snared in the dangerous web of fraternity of a fraternity led by a voodoo priest, <laughs> a frat led by a voodoo priest. This is going to be fun! <laughs> After a frenzied ritual initiation by undead zombies, oh, what a great way to get pledges, man! <laughs> ah. Andy wakes up to find the snake mark of evils of the evil snake goddess Izzily, Izzily, Izzily? <laughs> Tattooed on his chest. Now it's up to Andy to escape from the black magic powers before his girlfriend becomes the next human sacrifice. Well, Corey Feldman is the only star guy in this that is remotely recognizable. You know, life is full of sacrifices. Yeah, I hope I'm not sacrificing my time by watching this film, but they'll find out. I'll, I'll check it out sometime. Voodoo. Next one is a film called Capricorn One. You know, got in Nebraska. You know, the mission was a sham. Their murder's real. Stars Elliot Gould, James Brolin, Brandon Vaccaro, Sam Watterson, O.J. Simpson, Hal Halbrook, Karen Black, Tony Zavallis. What if one of the greatest space adventures is really a hoax? The whole world is watching as the first man flight to Mars prepare. 
Suddenly, it's astronauts James Brolin, Sam Otterson, and O.J. Simpson are taken to the craft to an abandoned desert hangar where NASA's director, Hal Holbrook, tells them this life support systems have failed. Because the mission's success is crucial to the future space programs, he orders them to take part in a simulated Martian landing as the camera rolls. They refuse, their families will be harmed. The phony flight goes well until an uninformed NASA technician spots a computer discrepancy. Medicinet mentions it to reporter friend Elliot Gould who smells a story and starts to investigate. When the rocket disintegrates and the world thinks them dead, the astronauts realize their lives are in danger. They escape and separate, hoping one will survive to expose the sensational fraud. An interesting idea, the fact that the whole trip to Mars was just a sham. But this is like a shitty avid UAV, UAV corporation release. But it still works, so I don't know, 50 cents. Next is a little movie called Don't Tell Her With Me. Starring Steve Gutenberg as a biker named Lobo. Yes. Lobo. Yeah, I know, Lobo. I know there's a comic book character called Lobo. And I get this damn sticker off here so I can see what the... Damn it, Blockbuster! Stupid stickers. Well, it's been on there for so long, I'm just gonna rip it. Steve Gutenberg stars as a novelist who can't help meddling in other people's lives. No, that's not it. Uh, Jamie Gertz? No. Uh, fucking Shelley Long? Shirley Long stars as a novelist who can't help meddling in other people's lives, like her brother, Gus, Steve Gutenberg, who lacks confidence in women. Lizzie takes it upon herself to give him a full makeover, combining all her heroic men from her romantic novels and the one guy no girl can resist, especially the girl of his dreams, Emily. Emily, Jamie Gertz. Under, under Lizzie's tutored tuition, Gus becomes Lobo, a smooth-talking, blue-eyed hunk, and Emily falls, Emily falls head over heels for him. So Gus has his girl, and Emily has his Lobo. But can true love be truly true if it's based on fiction? Gus tells he has to tell Emily. Feels he has to tell Emily who he really is. But how will Emily love the lobo list Gus? Can Lizzie come up with a happy ending to her romantic comedy of errors? So the issue with this film was... There's no way I'm going to believe Steve Rudenberg is a biker badass. No. No way. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? No, I don't either. Not... But, you know, it might be a fun... Romantic comedy. I like Steve Gutenberg. Sue me. I'll give it a shot because just because the Gut the Gutenberg's in it. Gutenberg is awesome. Next to the movie that is unintentionally hilarious and is a blast, and I would really love to do a commentary on this movie sometime. It's on YouTube. A film called Ninja Three: The Domination, starring Shokasugi and Lucinda Dickey. And Jordan Bennett in a Goa and Golbus production of a Sam Furstenberg film. Basically, yeah, let's get rid of this stupid plastic. I don't know why I didn't take this off before. The fastest. There we go. Ninja 3, the domination. The fastest, the deadliest, the best. Imagine a world where the living are possessed by mysterious demonic spirits from the past. Imagine a world where spectacular feats of strength are matched by bone-cracking stunts. Now enter your imagination, and the world of Ninja 3, the domination. Young, attractive Christy Ryder, dancer Lucinda Dickey. 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 I love it. Her last name is Dickey. Does, does, does Lucinda love some... Does Lucinda Dickey love some Dickey? <laughs> Sorry. Suddenly finds herself possessed by the diabolical spirit of a ninja assassin. Dominated by the killer's vicious and relentless rage, she sets out a brutal attack and destroys enemies. Her boyfriend, thoroughly confused by Christie's changed personality, is afraid that he might have been the next victim, and in the aid of Yam Yamada, Shokasugi, enter the ninja. Revenge of the ninja. The quintessential martial arts hero in a life in a life threatening exorcism and the ultimate fight to the death. Yamada proves that he is Christie's only chance to put survival, for only a ninja can kill a ninja. First off, that does not look... Look at that. Yeah, she looks badass, doesn't she? She looks like you can kick your ass and bullshit with her fucking... She looks like a man almost, too. That tell me, okay. Yeah, you're hot, said Dickie.